Had a bit of a renaissance in their program of Lake Clark last decade and a half. We have uh, seen them put up some great seasons. And you know, Kevin, the Badgers weren't really a major powerhouse in hoops until the turn of the century. But now, they're one of the most consistent teams in the country. Let's check out Wisconsin's starting lineup. We've got Kaminsky. Hawkins is out there with Hill. Then it's Decker, and it's Evans in at the four-man position. Here's Decker following the basket by Freak. Now Decker and two free throws coming up as he misses that one. Drawing the whistle and a lot of contact there. And Badgers have been great since right around the millennium. Since about 1999, they have made the tournament every season. <laughs> Guys, few schools can say that. And, you know, for Wisconsin and their consistent appearances in the tournament, guys, they, they don't just show up and leave now. I mean, they often go deep in the tournament. Sooner or later, I think they might go all the way again. Both good from the line that time. Here's free. Pass to Campbell. They set the pick. And he was fouled on the way up. Two free throws now for him. And with any championship game, you know that every player is going to have their heart racing for the first few minutes. That's just natural. That's adrenaline. They'll need to remain calm, though, and let the game come to them and kind of ease into it. And one guy, guys, I'll keep an eye on in this one is Freak. He is a, the consummate leader for his team. He can come out strong and play his game while keeping his intensity level up. It'll be just what they need to claim the title. That one falls, so he hits both of them. He's a dead eye at the line, fellas. Just call him automatic. He doesn't miss many of those. Evans, left side. Pass to Hawkins. And it's free with the rebound. On defense, Wisconsin. There's the dish to Freak. Drills it from outside. Freak's got seven points. 
There's a chance he could have a big game if they don't D him up more tightly on the perimeter. And what a journey it has been, really, for this whole team to make it to the college championship, especially for Freak. A few bumps in the road for him, but what a story. Greg, you get the feeling that it's only the beginning. I mean, the way he plays and the accolades he has, I mean, you can see him having a long and productive career at the pro level. Now here's Freak. Seven points in the game. No good with the triple. They need a good offensive possession. Yeah, they've had a number of empty ones a long time without a basket. They gotta find something, you're right. Hill passes to Evans. Dishes it to Kaminsky. Outside Hill. The Badgers working the ball around now. Down to five on the shot clock. Here's Decker. UCLA grabs the miss. And no excuse there for missing that one after being freed up by a great pick. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, they came away empty, but they got the look they wanted. And really, I, I've enjoyed, I like the movement and communication there. Pass to Hawkins. Hill has the open look. Good on the three-point shot. Hill's got five now. in a shooting guard. Johnson is out there with Thomas. Then there's Starks. And it's Morris in at the small forward. Starks against Fisher. Let's it go from 11. Here's Campbell, who's back up. And he was fouled in the act of shooting. Chance here now for a three-point play. And as we see Freak and his team go for the title here, he is trying to repeat what he did just a year ago. He was able to lead his high school to the PSAL championship. Well, Greg, he was a four-time All-American selection in high school and a unanimous one at that. He's won state titles before, but this is a different animal than high school. Wisconsin trails by three, and Wisconsin looking at who they've got. Hill is out there with Fisher, and it's Gibson in at the four. Hill dishes to Conley. Way to screen on Morris. And Fisher kicks to Hill. Gibson the screen. Shot clock at six. Wisconsin needs to get off a shot. The 19-foot shot, that's in there. Conley with the assist. Starks with it. Morris outside. Back to Starks. And it's good off the glass. Starks has got the lead back up to three now for the Bruins. Here's the Badgers with the ball. Fresh comes in for Campbell. And the pass to Hawkins. The feed to Kaminsky. Releases from 15. Jump shot is good that time. 
you know, as soon as he recognized the height mismatch, he immediately pulled up for the jump. And, Greg, that's just good basketball. Come on, good basketball there. Clean look from that range. He's got to take it. And fancy finishes like that look great, but, man, it's embarrassing when you blow him. Hawkins kicks to Decker. Here's the screen. Pass to Hawkins. Walker goes in. Somehow ignores the tight D and gets the way up. Here's UCLA. They trail by one. Here's Fresh. Morris passes to Starks. Back to Morris. Down low. That's good from Johnson on the assist by Morris. Great job of screening there. Nice job to take it to the rim and get the finish. Hawkins kicks to Conley. Seven second difference. Shot and game clock. Hawkins passes to Decker. To the paint. Off the pick. And Walker with the layup. This has been a thriller. You cannot say enough about the way these two teams have competed. All indications, Greg, are that this game is going down to the wire. I mean, I'd be surprised, actually shocked, if it ended any other way. Johnson lands soft on the front of the rim and drops. Johnson's got his second bucket tonight. Guys back and forth this first half. Well, five lead changes early on, guys, as we grapple back and forth. <laughs> and this could continue to go back and forth the entire way. And the first half comes to a conclusion in a game that has been very close so far. The big game is just about ready to get going for our second half of play. What a championship atmosphere we've got here tonight. We are just one half of basketball away from seeing college basketball history being made. And in a championship game like this one, guys, you would have expected a close battle. I don't think either side is going to be able to run away and hide in this one. And, Greg, tight games like this are where legends are born. I mean, if a player like Freak can come up huge in this final half of play, he'll anchor himself in school history as one of the greats to ever play the game. Campbell in a shooting guard. Campbell is out there with Looney. Then there's Free, and it's Roberts in at the five. Like it, two, and the basket by Free. Wisconsin trails by four, and Wisconsin looking at who they've got. We've got Hawkins. He's out there with Hill. Decker is out there with Kaminsky. And it's Evans in at the four slot. Free against Hawkins. It's Hill on the wing. Evans setting the pick for Hill. And two free throws coming up as he misses that one. Drawing the whistle and a lot of contact in. Badgers shooting their third and fourth free throw attempts of the game. The free throw drops for Hill. The Bruins making a switch here. Thomas is checked in. The Badgers also changing it up. Wade, he's checked in for Kaminsky. And it's Peyton in for Decker. Both free throws good from Hill. And it's the Bruins with the ball. The lead is two. Hawkins against Free. Pass to Campbell. Here's Free. A floater takes the three. And the Bruins, another three. You know, one of the big questions on everybody's mind in this game is whether or not Free will stay on for another year or go pro. I mean, usually a player with his upside would be a lock to be a one-and-done, but he's giving serious thought to staying. 
And, and Freak is a guy who clearly values the scholastic aspect of collegiate sports. So it makes sense for him to think about staying beyond this season. Still, with Freak's draft stock rising, this could be his final game as a collegiate player. Campbell with it. He's picked up by Hill. And it doesn't even matter that he's surrounded on that possession. He's got the size to pull those boards down anyway. Feeds to Evans. The shot misses. The Bruins go the other way with it. Inside, here's Campbell. It's hauled in by Hawkins. Boy, he really bungled that finish. He dishes it to Hill. Trying his luck deep, and he gets it to go. Hill's got 10 points in the game. And now a new group getting ready to come in for the Bruins. Johnson, he's checked in for Thomas. Irving comes in for Looney. Fresh is checked in for Campbell. And Barton subbed in for free. This game's still very much up in the air. I mean, this is where you start to separate the men from the boys and where heroes are born. And one team looking to ice the win, the other hoping to force OT. I think right now you lean on your stars and get the ball to freak every chance you get to try and come away here with the title. Here's Hill following the basket by Freak. Gibson the screen. Outside Hill. Kicks to Wade. Just five to shoot. Here's Gibson. Can't get it to go. No one to blame on that one but himself. You get looks like that, you've got to take advantage. Campbell, he's in at the point. Johnson is out there with Irving. Then it's Fresh, and it's Barton in at the shooting guard position. Freak dishes to Johnson. He feeds it to Freak. Great D that time from Gibson. Terrific job that time defending at the rim. I mean, it's not an easy task stopping that fella when he's headed to the bucket like that. Good job. It, it really does make the game easy for your teammates when you can lead them to the rim that well with a pass. Now here's what UCLA is going with on the floor. Roberts is checked in for Johnson. Looney comes in for Irving. Campbell is checked in for Fresh. And Porter subbed in for Barton. Evans with the steal. In transition, here come the Badgers. Passes it to Hawkins. He kicks it to Decker. And there's the pass to Hawkins. Now the dish to Decker. Will not go. This is off the front iron. Here's Looney. Here's Campbell. Trains the three-pointer. Three-point shooting since the half has been about as poor as you could ask for. And now's the time for them to step on the gas pedal. Don't let up. Keep letting it fly from deep and build that lead. Play through the finish line, not to it. Keep the pressure on. He's checked in for Wisconsin. And the Badgers with possession here. Four-point game.
Back to Evans. From 15 feet away, UCLA grabs the miss. Freak's got his third rebound on the night. Looney passes to Campbell. 111 left to play here in the second half. Campbell kicks to Freak. Tries from 16. It's rebounded by Peyton. Major defensive laps right there. I mean, he's not a player you can leave open for a jump shot. You've got to stay attached to him. They're lucky he couldn't punish them for it. Boy, what a pressure bucket that was. Greg, now that's coming through in the clutch. Hawkins against Free. Campbell kicks to Freak. Three-pointer. Decker with the rebound. Shot and game clock separated by five. This is to Kaminsky. Hawkins passes to Evans. And here's Hawkins. It's in! A huge shot to tie it up. Unbelievable basket. I mean, giving up a lot of height there, but he was not to be denied. Not when the game's hanging in the balance. That makes it a little different. He was going to get to the rim no matter who was standing in the way on that one. The feed now to Roberts. Pass to Campbell. From downtown. Can't get the three to fall. Regulation is ended and we're heading to overtime. What a thrilling ride we're enjoying tonight, folks. Welcome back as we start the overtime period. And the Badgers with possession here. The lead is two. Hawkins kicks to Gibson. And fouled hard that time. He'll get to the line and shoot two. Yeah, way to play in attack mode and get to the... Defense gets their money's worth on that foul, stopping the layup and not giving up the and one. That's the first, and that makes it a three point lead. Free throws are good, and it's a four point ball game. Yeah, two possession game now. I mean, those were really important foul shots. There's 48 seconds left in the second overtime period, and here we are. Free passes to Roberts. The shot is off, so the Badgers will take it the other way, and now they decide to foul intentionally. Oh, 
throw. One and one situation, so he'll get another. The Badgers making a switch here. Evans is checked in. So he gets them both, and it's a six-point ball game. You no know, mistakes there. Good free throws to give them just a little bit more cushion. Absolutely critical chance right here. They need this one to go their way. Shot by Roberts, no good. Oh, tough D on the inside. It sure was, Greg. No easy access to the basket when that fellow's in the middle. Two shots. So it's Wisconsin picking up the win. Such a special moment for these kids. All the hard work they put in, all the pressure Greg they've been under all tournament long. This is pure elation. Being able to call themselves now champions. And, and Kevin, from the players, the rest of the students watching, I mean, this is something that can never be taken from them. They will always have this moment in history to reflect upon. And it's such a punishing path to this moment. I mean, you look back on all the close calls along the way as the field gets whittled down round by round. I mean, they survived quite the... Hello? Hey, Ma, it's me. Hey, Frequency. Hi, I got you on speakerphone. OK, your sister there? Hey, Mama, I'm right here. Hey, baby, how you doing? I'm fine. You bet's here too, Mama. Hi, Mama. How you doing? I'm fine. Does she have to be here? Yes. Mr. Pagnotti, the agent I was telling you about, he's in the room too. How you doing, ma'am? I'm good. Nice to meet you. What a pleasure to finally meet the queen mother of this young, talented man, even if only by telephone. That's sweet. Hang on, Frequency. Here comes your father. All right. Hey, sorry I'm late. Hope everyone's well. How hey, you doing, Daddy. Mr. Bobs? I'm doing good. So let's get to it. Yeah, let's do this. We all know why we're here. This meeting is strictly confidential, 100% off the record. Didn't happen. We weren't even here. Capiche? Capiche means understand in Italian. Capiche? Capiche. Capiche. Freak insisted that I have his entire family here. And I think it's great that he has a good support system around him. I've been doing this a very long time, and I work with some of the best. Now, let me rephrase that. I work with the best, and the best always seem to have a great support system around them. A family, if you will, you know what I'm saying? Yes. So let's cut to the chase. Leaving college early now and entering this year's NBA draft is the right move right now. And when you sign with me, Dom Pagnotti, as your agent, I will make sure you are well taken care of. I will make sure you are protected. With this freaking and vibing, I love it. Freaking and vibing. This freaking and vibing thing you do when you get hot freak, we're gonna make you more money off the court than you will on. We already have endorsements and things like that in mind, so. Cece, I said we because we're gonna do this together. We're a team. We're team freak. But freak, you need to be in the league first, right? That's why I'm here. No, yeah, I hear you, Mr. Pagnotti, but like I told you before, I already promised my parents four years of college. That's the plan, man. That's right. Plans change, change freak. freak. Listen. In life and in basketball, you need to adapt and change to the situation at hand. Now, even if you have the greatest coach and they draw up the greatest play and all the X's and O's make perfect sense on paper, you still need to react to what the defense shows you and then make your move. This is the right move. This is the right move now. And four years of college is a great plan for basically anybody. But you're not just anybody. You are the greatest collegiate talent I have ever seen shoot, dribble, pass, and defend a basketball my entire time on this great planet Earth. Now, Miss Martha, Mr. Pete, I have seen so many of the greats jump right from high school to the pros. Freak, you've at least experienced college. You know what that is. You've been there. You've done that. I am offering you now a chance at the experience of a lifetime. Do you know how many people would love to be in those Jordans right now? Yeah, Freak, I mean, what if you get hurt? You remember how you came down on your ankle in that game earlier this year? Oh, yeah, but I was nothing. Right, we know it was nothing, but next time it could be something. I saw that. Good game, but bam! Just like that, and you could be flipping burgers. Well, maybe not flipping burgers. Maybe you're the manager or assistant manager at some burger joint. Maybe I do a favor and make a call, and you're a delivery boy at Sal's Famous Pizzeria. But the bottom line is, you will be a long, long, long ways away from signing multi-million dollar contracts with me, mm. Don Pagnotti, as your mm. agent. So it's all about the money, right? When was it not all about the money? Money isn't everything. 
No, it isn't, sir, and no disrespect was meant. But freak, money is freedom, the freedom of choice, the freedom to live. Money is the difference between renting and owning, between being the waiter and being waited on. It's the difference between being the chauffeur or being chauffeured. Now, do you want to be a chauffeur? This here is a contract. This makes me your agent. Sign on the dotted line, and I will take you and your family to the promised land. Like I said, Mr. Pagnotti, it's not all about the money. Pete, let the man finish. He made his point. He's finished. Aren't you finished? I said my piece, but I know I'm right. You guys should talk. Pete, what if frequency does get hurt? Shouldn't he take this opportunity now? What if the boy goes pro, gets hurt, and then doesn't have a college degree? Look how hard we work for him to get to where he is. But college isn't for everybody. Pete, you didn't go. That's why we work so hard for him. I'm just saying, I mean, if he's ready to do this now as opposed to later, Pete, anything can happen. You're right. Anything could happen. This is his future. This You're is his life. You're not listening to me, Pete. Not just a game. All right, all right, all right. Mom, Pops. It's all right. Look, truth be told, I don't even know what I want to do right now. I understand that. Yeah, but I was talking to my boy Vic the other day. Why? He, and he was making a lot of sense. He thinks I should leave early, too. You know what? I've, I, no, no, I've kept quiet this whole time, and I also think that Freak should join the league. I think it's a great business decision, and I think that Mr. Pagnotti is absolutely right. Thank you, Yvette. You're welcome. Now, Freak, I know for a fact that people have been talking about the company you keep, and you need to be careful. It could compromise what we're trying to do here. What are you trying to say? You know, your association with that guy Victor off the court, it could compromise your selection in a draft. As a matter of fact, I know it will. Do you realize the difference in dollars between being drafted first overall and 21st? You're talking tens of millions of dollars. You don't get it, do you? Cece, our first sneaker deal alone, you're talking a difference of a 50 to 100 million dollar difference. Just by that, number one, that's what we need. If I were not 1,000% convinced in my mind and in my heart that we could get you drafted first overall, I wouldn't be like this. This is the play, this is the move, freak. You gotta listen and to I, me. I, I absolutely hear you, but who are they to tell me who I can't hang with my brother? No, freak, you need to listen to him. I've been telling you the same exact thing. Mr. Dom, Frequency and Victor grew up together. They're best friends. We took the boy in and practically adopted him. Martha, I told you that boy ain't nothing but trouble. He, he's family. OK, but that's my boy, and he agrees with y'all. It's not about agreeing with Vic. We're trying to prepare you for your future. You know, but it is his future. This so is so none of your business. You still Excuse you me? Don't even yeah. Yeah. You yeah. still have a decision yeah. to make. Sign with no, me, yes or no. Can I just, can I just interrupt for one sec? Everybody just settle down, please. Now, I appreciate you all taking the time in this heated discussion, but the truth of the matter is, there's only one person in the room that can make this decision. Now, son, you know how I feel. Right. Education is the most important thing in life, but this is your choice. It's not your mother's or your sister's or mine. Mm. It's not your girlfriend's. It's not Mr. Pagnotti's. And it definitely ain't Victor's. This is your decision, son. So you tell us what you want to do. I need 30 seconds, freak. OK. I have four beautiful children, and I want each of them to go to college and graduate. But if you walked up to any one of those four children right now and said, I will give you a contract that's worth 100, 200, 300 million dollars, I would say, bypass college. You can always go back. I want you to graduate. I want you to get your doctorate. I want to call you Dr. Freak. But you need to understand this. Now, you can go all over this beautiful country that we live in and go into any of the major universities. You will find people that are 30, 40, 50, 60, 80 years old, and you will find them graduate. But if you live to be 500 years old, you will never see ever, ever somebody 40, 50, 60 years old being drafted from college into the NBA. We need to strike while the iron is hot. This is your life. We will get you drafted first overall. You will be up there with all the big names. I'm not talking first rounder. I'm talking first overall. Listen to me. This is what Mr. I do. I am the best at what I you do. Have had Nobody your 30 is better. Seconds plus. Miss Martha, I am sorry. You Mr. just need Bagnotti, to understand. Would you please let my wife speak? I apologize. Frequency. Baby, what do you want to do? OK. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have Cece go through this contract front to back. I'm going to think about it, sleep on it, pray on it, and I will call you in the morning. All right. Listen, 
Mr. Pete, Ms. Martha, it was a pleasure meeting the two of you over telephone, and I look forward to meeting you both in person. Remember, everybody, this meeting never took place. We weren't even here. Capish? Capish. Okay. All right, Mom, Pops, I'm gonna call you guys later. I love you. Love you, right, son. I love you too, son. Bye. We met working at the post office together. Martha was a clerk and I was a carrier. And uh, I asked her out to lunch one time and take her for a bagel around the corner from where we worked. A bagel? A bagel. Yeah. With cream cheese? Cream cheese. Split down the middle? Split down the middle. Love at first sight. Yeah. I believe that. It was true. It happened to me. Good evening and welcome to the NBA Draft. With the first pick in the NBA Draft, the Minnesota Timberwolves select Carl Anthony Towns from the University of Kentucky. With the select D'Angelo Russell. With the third pick in the NBA draft, the Philadelphia 76ers select Jalil Okafor from Duke University. With the fourth pick in the NBA draft, the New York Knicks select Kristaps Porzingis from Latvia. With the fifth pick in the NBA draft, the Orlando Magic select Mario Hezonja from Dubrovnik, Croatia. With the sixth pick in the NBA draft, the Sacramento Kings select Willie Cauley-Stein from the University of Kentucky. With the seventh pick in the NBA draft, the Denver Nuggets select Emmanuel Moutier from Dallas, Texas. With the eighth pick in the NBA draft, the Detroit Pistons select Stanley Johnson from the University of Arizona. With the ninth pick in the NBA draft, the Charlotte Hornets select Frank Kaminsky. With the 10th pick in the NBA draft, the Miami Heat select Michael Campbell from UCLA. Let's do this, young man. Yes, sir. <laughs> wow, that's a good show. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Frequency Vibration. Yeah. Welcome aboard, young man. Yes, welcome aboard. Wow. Wow. <sighs> this is bananas. Take your time, baby. Thanks, Ma. OK, so I first want to thank everyone who made this possible. Mom, Dad, I couldn't have done this without you. <laughs> I like to thank my lady, Yvette. My dude, Vic. Hey, yo, I got you, man. <laughs> hey, all of them in the building all day, man. All right. Yeah, I love you, man. I love yeah. you in town. Okay. Hey, he, he, he's like my brother. 
Oh, gosh. And also, want to thank my sister, Cece, who is also my manager. <laughs> Swish. Love you. I love you more. And my agent, Mr. Don Pagnotti himself. You're the man, baby. <laughs> I guess I will take some questions now. Yes, ma'am. How did you get the nickname Freak? A lot of people don't know this, but Freak is short for my very first nickname, Frequency Vibrations. <laughs> yeah, true story. I like to introduce our mother so she could tell it. Go ahead, you know, mama. Tell mama. Her. Her mama. Mama. <laughs> okay, no, mama. Thank you, everyone. Uh, Frequency and Cece are fraternal twins. And so when I was pregnant, one of them kept kicking and jumping around all the time. So my husband, Pete, put headphones on my belly and played reggae music. Hence the name Frequency Vibrations. <laughs> we shortened it to Freak. How did you know who was kicking? A mother knows. A mother always knows. Are you ready for a photo op? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the next NBA superstar, Frequency Vibration. Yes! Go ahead, son. Thank you all for coming. We will be available for one-on-ones in the back. Good job. Well done. Congratulations, well done. sir.
All right, all right, all right. You all know why we're here and what we came to do this year. This is only the beginning of a very long season, but game one means just as much as game 82. Now, we have some new faces here that I really expect to make an impact for us this season. We've already seen flashes of what they can do for us, but I expect all of you to go out there and execute just like we did in camp. Ain't no more excuses. It's time to get serious. If we play our brand of basketball, there's no telling where this team can go. So get out there, get warm, and let's go win this game. Here we go, my first NBA game. This is something I've been waiting for my entire life. And to be honest, I'm a little bit nervous. But I know this is where I belong. So I just gotta get out there and do what I was born to do. I hope I can make my family proud. This is it, opening day. The regular season is set to begin, and we're thrilled to bring you all the live action right here on 2K Sports. This is Kevin Harlan with Greg Anthony and Clark Kellogg and our sideline reporter, Doris Burke. We'll see the Miami Heat defending home turf in the Eastern Conference. And this matchup with the Hornets, it's their first game of the NBA's regular season. This team matched up so well during the regular season last year, splitting their four games. This should be a terrific battle. And two teams here that were evenly matched a season ago as they split the season series. Yeah, they settled for 500 against most teams. Both squads win challenge, perhaps a way to put it. But one of them has got to win tonight. And so the tip-off, it's Miami. a million miles an hour yeah I'm sure it is I mean there are all different kinds of pressure situations this is about as nerve-wracking as it gets but even so I don't think it takes away from how much he enjoys it on the court for Charlotte they've got Batum Kaminsky out there with Tyler Hansbro then it's Jeremy Lin and it's Lamb at the shooting guard position defensively giving up far too many open rhythm look and to battle back They've got to shore up the defense. I mean, there's no other way to come back from a deficit unless you play good defense. Nice open look, but it's no good. They've been sensational on the backboard to start this game. Yeah, sensational is a really good word for it, Greg. They're tearing it up on the glass. So far, so good for them at the offensive end here in the early going. He had a great field goal percentage to start exactly what they were hoping for. Now here's Lynn. He hasn't scored yet. That I'm sure will change. There's a screen. Hansbro setting the pick for Lamb. An amazing finish with a hand right in his face. 17 seconds left to play here in the first. The Heat leading by 17. Feeds it to Anderson. And here's Winslow. Here's Campbell. Off target from three-point range. The first quarter concludes in a double-digit lead on the scoreboard. Miami ahead, leading by 17. Well, earlier we sat down with Freak and asked him about playing in his first NBA game. You know, I've thought about this moment my entire life. Now that it's finally here, the feeling's pretty crazy. But I know it's just the beginning. I got a lot of hard work ahead of me to get to where I want to go, to be the best player and the best teammate I can be. But this is an exciting first step, no doubt. 
You know, Clark, you don't see that kind of perspective from all those rookies, do you? You really don't, Kevin. I mean, I really like his approach to the game. Maybe he only rap to pay the bills. And now I'm fed it, not even a little bit. Oh, Lord, know yourself, know your worth. My ex is being louder than my words. I you so, but still so down to earth. Won't do it, we can do it on the turf. Oh, Lord, I'm the rookie in the vet. Shout out to the bitch I ain't holding down the set. They've also gotten into a nice rhythm from the three-point line early on tonight. Hornets trail by 17. While you look back at the 2015 Heat and the injuries are what probably brought that team down. We can go from Chris Bosh with the debilitating blood clot on his lung and on and on and on. The loss, of course, which was not an injury of LeBron James. There are a lot of moving parts with that team. And that's a great point, Kevin. If you take any star uh, off a of team, things are going to get difficult. It was impressive that the Heat still managed to stay competitive once Bosch went out. All fueled up and ready to go. Let's reset the lineups courtesy of Gatorade as the second quarter gets going. And for Miami, look at who they've got out there. Campbell in its shooting guard. Green is out there with Chris Bosch. Then it's Stoudemire. And it's Dragic in at the one spot. You know, Bosch was the big injury hit for the Heat, but they had a lot of other injuries as well. I mean, had to use 31 different starting lineups last season, and 20 different players started at least one game. Lynn kicks to Zeller. The feed to Lamb. Charlotte again missing. And they've got a big lead, not just on the scoreboard, but really in the rebounding numbers as well. And what I like about it, Greg, it's been a physical brand of basketball. It's had a little sandpaper element to it. Gritty and, and rough, but that's how you win games. And injuries are something that you can't plan for, but you can prepare for them and, and hopefully that he can avoid injury woes this season if, if they can they at least have players who have been through that struggle last year clearly he's one of the best there is in the business when it comes to making that lead pass timeout call for the heat give it up for your heat dancers With some changes. Whiteside's checked in for Stoudemire. Dang comes in for Green. And Dwayne Wade subject. So as we conclude the first ten. Okay, guys, great work in the first half. That's how you take care of business on your home court. Couple things. You guys came to play today. What a job shutting them down with our D and running our own offense with precision. I love the focus I'm seeing. I did, however, like our on the ball defense. We didn't give their ball handlers any breathing room and they didn't handle it well. We came up with some good steals. And just to talk about what we want for the pace of the game, I'd say nice and steady suits us just fine. It doesn't have to be a track meet. All right, guys, I know we got a healthy lead, but we cannot let up against this tougher team. Let's go. Okay, We're getting back to the action now. It's been a one-team show so far. We'll see if that changes here in the third. Hassan Whiteside really making a difference here. And how about his scoring in that first half? He just looked like a different player today, really on point. Quite honestly, it's been a pleasant surprise for him. You know, he really hit on something that worked in those first two quarters, guys.
Hornets shooting a terrible 27% from the floor. Boy, an off night for them to say the least. And Charlotte had a lot of momentum going into last season off that playoff appearance. But they just stumbled out of the gates last season and spent the whole year playing catch-up. Tipping off the second half, here's Steve Clifford's five. MKG and Zeller at the forward duo. Jeremy Lamb out there with Kemba Walker. And it's Jefferson in at the five. Roman the paint. Cans the 12-footer. Nine points for Chris Bosch. Now for the Hornets, they seem to get back on track last January, but they faded Clark quickly after that and were too far behind to, to make up room and get in the playoffs. And, you know, they had a rash of injuries, Kevin, and that really did them in. All in all, it was a season that just didn't have any traction for them because of the injuries. Sure. And, and you could tell that pass just hung in the air for a long time. Yeah, exactly. Long enough for him to get a hand on it and knock it out of play. Screen by Jefferson. Clock at six. Outside Kid Gilchrist. From deep. The shot misses. Good D by Wade. They've shown some strength in the paint today. Their work on the board. Campbell, he's checked in for Luol Dang. Miami's gone three of seven tonight from three-point territory. Now here's Freak, guarded closely. Right side of screen. Bosch dishes to Wade. Back to Bosch. It's rebounded by Kid Gilchrist. Kid Gilchrist has got his third rebound on the night. Lamb with the ball. Now guarded by Dragic. Walker the pass to Lamb. That falls. Nice feed that time from Walker. Yes. And it's six points for Lamb. He'd have gone three of five to start the second half, developing a nice rhythm out there. Bosch, a screen on Walker. And it's Dragic off the drive. And Jefferson sends it back. Right side to Walker. Kicks it to Jefferson. And big offensively in the post. He doesn't seem to be moving that fast. But Clark, he piles up the digits. Yeah, he puts numbers up. I mean, he's got a deep bag of low post tricks. He positions himself well. He's got a wide body, good hands. And a nice touch, so it makes him hard to stop down there. The Hornets shooting 32% overall right now. Not one of their better showings. Fourth rebound with that last one here tonight. Their game plan needs to change if they're going to get out of this hole because he is just not there offensively. Rogic against Kid Gilkins. Rogic gets to free. Again, the miss by the Heat. The mechanics totally out of whack right now. He's lost his feel for the shot. Yeah, he really has. I mean, just totally out of sync. I mean, you can just see it in the numbers. Nothing going down for him right now. Boy, just an excellent assist. Nice work from Kimball Walker. Kid Gilchrist with the steal. Now Lamb. Six points for him. Jefferson has a wide open look. Again, the miss by Jefferson. The Heat leading by 23. Right side, Bosch. Shoots from the right block. That's in coming off an assist from Kragic. And 11 points for Chris Bosch. No doubt about the consistency when it comes to scoring the basketball for him tonight. A real nice lift for their offense. For us, Doris. I was able to listen in on what Steve Clifford was going over with his The heat shooting has been outstanding in this game at 58%. Dang and Bosch, you're small and power forwards. Tragic is out there with Campbell. And it's Haslam in at the five. That's the group on the floor for Miami. Here's Bosch. And there's the whistle. Fouled hard on the shot. He'll go to the line. It goes on Cody Zeller. Just some amazing stats put up by Chris Bosh early in his career. But having been in the shadow of LeBron and D. Wade over the past few seasons, one wonders if Bosh is now a little bit underrated. 
He's talented and gives you everything you want from the power forward spot. Well, getting back to Chris Bosh, it's always difficult to reshape your game around a superstar teammate. I mean, just ask Kevin Lug last year. You know, it's such a good point. When, when you think about Bosh, you know, he isn't the kind of guy who demands special attention. You know, he's not mugging for the, the press. He's not out there for himself. He just really lets his play speak for itself. And, and you won't find many bigs who are as versatile as he is and, and much underrated, I think, as a pick-and-roll defender. Good. Good look. He'll make that one most of the time. Ryan, Ryan. A few possessions into the fourth quarter, just over a minute played. Pass to Day. That's in coming off an assist from Dragic. Dragic has got his fourth assist with that last one here tonight. And Roberts kicks to Hairston. There's a screen. Williams, a screen on Day. Six on the shot clock. And it's Kid Gilchrist penetrating. And there's the whistle. No. Fouled hard on the one shot. Man. He'll go to the line. That's his first personal foul. And when you think of Kid Gilchrist, one thing that comes to mind is intangibles. He has a desire and intensity and a will to win that elevates him to elite status. Yeah, you know, he never will be a great shooter. And he's still working on his jump shot. But the intangibles, you talked about it. You add heart and tenacity to that. Every team wants a guy like that. Josh McRoberts has checked in for Miami. And talking about Kip Gilchrist, yes, he's worked to fix his shooting form last season, but the real improvement was made on the boards. He averaged seven and a half rebounds a game in only 29 minutes of play. That is outstanding. And mark that bucket down, folks. That's the first career basket from Campbell. You know, it, maybe not the prettiest bucket he'll ever score, but it'll always be the first one. And the first will make it the prettiest one. Well, no matter how he got it, just a fantastic moment in this young man's career and his basketball life. Well, with Free Clark, there was a question whether he would stay another year in college. Really was a tough decision for him, but he ended up coming out after his freshman year. And, Kevin, it's really hard to blame a guy like Freak for doing that. I mean, he's clearly NBA-ready, and he's putting a lot at risk for every year he stays in school when he could be on the NBA clock. And here we see the debut of Freak, the kid from Harlem, his first time on an NBA floor. And, Clark, it's a moment that he's worked very hard to achieve, and his family has got to be proud. Extremely so, Kevin. It's been a long journey for him, but every level along the way, he's found success. High school phenom. Playing for a college championship. I wouldn't bet against this kid on anything when it comes to basketball. And for Kid Gilchrist, he was accustomed to so much winning in high school, college, international competition. He's had a rough first three years in the NBA making the playoffs only once in that time. But he's a real warrior, so that has to be killing him inside. Roberts cranes it from beyond the arc. And he came off that screen, and the D just didn't get over the top of it. Yep, weren't there in time enough to challenge, Greg. And when that's the case, you can mark those up for him. Campbell against Hairston. It's deflected. And here we go. Fast break. Kid Gilchrist has got it. And it's good. Wow, the floor just really opened up for him on that possession. Yeah, I mean, I'm all for good offense, but that was just a terrible reaction from the defense. And we're about three and a half minutes into the fourth quarter. Haslam a screen on Hairston. And the foul on Al Jefferson. That's his third foul of the game. And it seems every season we see a player try and play through an injury. Sometimes it provides a boost with heroics, but it can lead to serious damage long term. It's a common practice we see, and some guys are pretty cavalier about it. Wade, he's checked in for the wall down. Tell you what, he's not an easy guy to stop when he's got his sight on the rim. Never has been, never will be. He is a determined finisher. Did he just go chop chop there with that one hand tomahawk slam? Here's Hairston. Excellent D from Wade. Isn't not the best shot right there with a good defender draped all over you? I agree with you. I mean, not the shot they were hoping for, but he can really cause problems with his defense. It's rebounded by Kid Gilchrist. Kid Gilchrist has got six rebounds in the game. Pass to Roberts. Let's the three fly. 
can't get it to go. Miami's gone one or two from three-point range here in the fourth. Wade kicks to Freak from past the arc. The kick out to Dragic. Pass to Wade. And it goes out of bounds. Oh, yeah. Last touch by you Wade. And one team is just completely outclassing the other tonight. Spirited performance. And it really ignited what is turning out to be a monster win here for the Heat. And this was one that never really was in doubt, I thought, Stephen Clark. Uh, an all-around dominant performance. Clark, and you kind of thought that maybe even going into the game. I certainly did. And they just cracked it open and made it an in seats. No contest. Yeah, I like that. And it'll go down as their first official win of the new year. And it's always nice to get win number one against an opponent you'll be seeing a total of four times over the course of the year. They really set the tone tonight for their season series against the Hornets. A good win, and a lot went into it. But I just like the showing for Chris Bosh. There wasn't much they could do to slow him down as he was converting every good chance he got. And Lamb kicks to Roberts. There's a screen by Ansbro. Over in the corner, Lamb. Elbow shot is on the way. And that one comes up a bit short. Eight-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Here's Campbell. And that one goes in as he is fouled. It'll be three points if he converts at the line. Well, if it wasn't out of reach, it is now, thanks to that last little spurt. And why put the brakes on now? I just say keep on letting it fly. Free throw drops for Campbell. 26 seconds.
minutes left in the fourth quarter. Roberts dishes to Kaminsky. There's 14 seconds left in the fourth quarter of this one. Offensive rebound. Now the pass to Harrison. There's a screen by Hansbrough. Dishes at the land. And so Miami takes this one by a big margin. This game may not have been the most exciting we've ever seen, but you have to appreciate just what a clinical performance they put on. Yeah, they were the superior team in every department, in every category to me, Kevin. I know their fans loved it and appreciated it. And that about does it for the first game of the new NBA season. This is Kevin Harlan thanking you for watching. Now we'll head over to the award-winning Ernie Johnson, who's not too far away. EJ? The 2K Sports Post Game Show. Welcome back, Ernie Johnson, along with Shaq and Kenny the Jet. Let's quickly move forward now to the presentation of our Jordan player of the game, Chris Bosch. Let's get your opinion, Shaq. He had a sensational night shooting the ball. Over 60% reminds me of myself. If you're shooting over 60%, you're playing smart, you're being aggressive. And you're creating opportunities. What a spectacular performance. Chris Bosch came to play tonight, guys. And that's a frightening prospect for an opposing team. Because when you've got a big who can score from anywhere like Bosch can, it doesn't take much to get him on a serious roll. Makes it easy to see why he's an all-star over and over again, year in and year out. And that's it for our broadcast here tonight. But we're just getting started on a new season in the NBA. For Shaquille O'Neal, Kenny the Jet Smith, Kevin Harlan, and the entire 2K sports crew, I'm Ernie Johnson. We'll see you again soon.
I'm coming home. New York City, baby. I'll be honest. I'm pretty excited. Mama, Pops, and Cece, yeah, they're going to be there. Playing in front of them in the NBA uniform for the first time is going to be a special moment for me. Now, I know all of Harlem is going to be watching. No pressure, right? It's all good, though. I've been waiting for this my entire life. to enjoy an evening of basketball in beautiful New York City. Well, the weekend has officially begun, and we welcome you to this 2K Sports presentation of NBA Basketball. This is Kevin Harlan with Clark Kellogg and Greg Anthony. And joining us in a bit later from the sidelines, Doris Burke. We've got an Eastern Conference battle ready to get rolling, and this New York crowd wants some love from their Knicks. They went to Miami for their last meeting with the Heat and came out with a win. Deadly from behind the three-point line in that game, and it really gave them the ability, I felt, to stretch that defense out. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, it opened things up for them in a big way. The defense was never... And here in the first quarter, with a little over three and a half minutes played. Yeah, and the Miami Heat have finished in the top two spots or better in each of the years the, the big ball. three were in town. Last hard. season, that changed as they would end up 10th in that Eastern Conference. And the wide open shot from Green. Trains the three-pointer. Green's got himself going there. His first points of the game on the deep ball. Calderon against Campbell. Now, here's Calderon. He's tightly guarded. A follow, no good. Very dangerous to lead a guy like that open. Lucky break there for the D. No good from Campbell. Knicks trail by six. Three on three. Williams dishes to O'Quinn. And the pass to Serafin. Great D that time from Green. Miami's gone one of five from downtown in the first quarter. Points out there have been hard to come by. Pass to Campbell. Anderson kicks to Winslow. Heat moving the ball around. Five on the clock. Campbell, the pass to Stoudemire. That misses off the backboard. The Miami Heat comes into this one following a loss to Detroit. And one of the factors, Kevin, that really hurt them in that game, the lack of success at the foul line. We all know how much those free throw woes can cost you. And it gave those opposing fans a boost every time another foul shot clanged off the rim. I mean, that's an easy way to get the home crowd in your grill. And here we go. Fast break. Colderone's got it. Here's Serafin. Anderson with the block. Break, dishes to Stoudemire. Can't cash in from close range. Nice effort anyway to change his shot and get around the defender maybe next time. Green against Calderon. Kicks to a flummer. Here's O'Quinn. Off target with his three. And out of bounds as the Knicks gain possession. You know, that's hard to explain that, but I mean, I, I guess he thought he had more room than he did. Lance Thomas! There's 10 seconds left in the first. Calderon kicks to Serafin. And out of bounds as the Heat gain possession. Heat ball. Now here's Freak. He got it up that time, but it wouldn't fall for him. 
And that concludes the first quarter of play. Heat lead by four. After this... And now a chance to hear from Chris Bosh about what it meant to him to become an NBA player, the fulfillment of a lifelong dream. What a great cut from Chris Bosh. That's, that's the kind of guy you can't help Greg but love. Gerald Green comes in for Lou Aldang. And it's Campbell in for Dwayne. Wade. Williams is out there with Kyle O'Quinn. Then it's Kevin Serafin. Then there's Calderon. And it's a Flalo in at the two. That's the five for New York right now. Here we are in November, and let's see how things are going out east in the early season. Taking a look at Miami. Lurking in the basement of the conference for the time being. They're not pleased with their performance so far this season. And, of course, New York, two games back. And right now for Miami, nobody was calling on them to kind of set the world on fire. But, but even those modest expectations have yet to be realized. Yeah, you know, Greg, it's been a shame for their fan base, too, because they haven't really had much to be optimistic about to this point. Anderson, he's checked in for the Heat. Winslow comes in for Goran Dragic. And just over three and a half minutes played here in the second quarter. And it's blocked by Campbell. And it's going to be out of bounds. The Knicks will retain possession. Every Still Knicks ball. Go. Shot clock at five. From deep three-point range, shot by Zerofin, no good. And one thing we know about Justice Winslow, he is great on the big stage. He was amazing in the tournament for Duke a season ago. Got better and better as he helped his school capture the national championship. The dish now to O'Quinn. He kicks it to Williams. Now, here's Calderon. He's guarded close. Here's O'Quinn. That ball's nice feed this time from Jose Calderon. With Winslow, it's all about improvement and being great on the big stage. I, th I think he can do that, Greg. You talked about, you know, what he did in the national championship run. Clark, he was a fantastic foundation to begin with. Yeah, you know what? He's not got many holes in his game. Solid at the defensive end, can score a lot of ways, puts his hands on winning at both ends of the floor. Knicks trail by nine. They could use a big shot here to get this offense going. Sure could, Kev. I mean, too many empty trips. They need some points. Here's Calderon. Amari Stoudemire with the rebound. A slight advantage for them in the rebound department, but that oftentimes is all it takes. Especially, Greg, when you're scoring the ball at a decent clip the way they have. I mean, they've done exactly what's necessary to take the lead. And so he earns a trip to the line. Officials saw the contact, and he'll shoot two. And, and guys, Gerald Green looked to be out of the NBA at one point in his career. But, but since coming back from Russia, he has completely reinvented himself as a player. And for Gerald Green and him reinventing himself, really uh, was just known as a dunker before heading overseas. You know, Kevin, he came back with a better shot and a better understanding of how to win as a player. Strange to think that there was a time that he couldn't find a way onto an NBA roster. The Knicks making a switch here. Lopez is checked in. And both free throws good for Green. Last season ended with the Knicks pretty much packing it in, but Clark, it, it didn't start out that way. You know what? Not at all. I mean, the Knicks were picked by many, Kevin, to be a playoff team last season. Clearly, things did not go as planned. They get it back. Miami leading by 11. Feeds to Freak. Anderson passes to Stoudemire. And that's good off the glass that time. Stoudemire's got his first two points of the night. 
My, he is so adept at finishing in the low post. Calderon against Campbell. Calderon kicks to Aflalo. Passes it to Serafin. Baseline jumper. And he gets the bucket. Yeah, that's asking a lot from that defender. Yeah, it certainly is. I mean, he just doesn't have the size to really be effective in that kind of matchup. Here's Campbell. And we finished one half of basketball. Kevin, I'm here with Coach Eric Spolstra. And Eric, you guys have seemed in complete command out here tonight. What's been the key so far? Well, I, I think uh, we've been able to get to our pace. We've been active defensively. Uh, so we just have to maintain our, our focus and, and keep trying to be in attack mode. Both ends of the court. Eric, thank you so much. Kevin, back to you. All right, Doris, thank you. And time now for the halftime break with the third quarter soon to follow. All right, men, we've done a good job in the first half of taking the momentum and being assertive with our style of play. For the most part, we played an intelligent first half. Our passing has been crisp. We haven't given the ball away, and that's big because we can't afford turnovers. Those will kill us. We showed some good upside with our offense. Let's keep things fresh. I don't want us to get caught in a rut. Keep the ball moving and run different plays each time down. And let's try to play the second half at a moderate pace. Not too slow, but not too fast that it turns into a shootout. That's not what we want. All right, we're in good shape, but this is a strong team we're up against. We're going to have to weather some storms in the second half. Come on, fellas. We got this. Getting back to the action now. It's been a one-team show so far. We'll see if that changes here in the third. Anthony was playing great. He's got 11 points, and he has one steal to his credit as well. And hey, Clark, he's just done a great... We've gone about three and a half minutes into the third now. On the floor for Miami, Campbell in at point guard. Anderson is out there with Stoudemire. Then there's Gerald Green, and it's Winslow in at the three spot. And denied at the rim, but they call the foul. Whistle blows, and we'll see him shoot two from the line. And that's a smart foul there. Instead of giving up the easy deuce, send him to the line. And he's not a very good foul shooter, so that's a heads-up play by the defense there. The Knicks shooting their seventh and eighth attempts at the foul line tonight. Free throw good, Thomas. Well, Greg, after a run of 10 playoff trips in 11 years, the Miami Heat missing the postseason last year, they'd end up a game back of the eighth spot. Yeah, and, and what's hard for the Heat, Kevin, is that they were in the playoff picture for most of the year, and as the season wore on, they slowly fell out of that top eight. Jose Calderon, he's checked in for New York. They break it out, five on three. Here's Thomas. The shot is off, and it's Miami the other way. 13 points was their biggest lead in the game. The Celtics will be coming into town for the next game. That'll be the first of four played at home for them. You know, guys, for the greater part of last season, it appeared as though the Heat were playoff bound. Even with the players they lost, most figured they would be playing postseason basketball. Amundsen. That ball's nice speed this time from Jose Calderon. Calderon's got six assists here tonight. Campbell against Calderon. Releases. They get it again. 
A nice shot by Winslow. Some big points there. I mean, they got him on a nice play to get the ball right to the bucket. And in exactly what they're looking for down the stretch, Clark. Just more of the same. There's a screen. Looking to get it going. So the whistle blows on the shot and two free throws for the contact right there. And one reason why the Heat did come up short in their playoff aspirations, they were very poor against other teams in the playoffs. They only went 15 and 31 against teams that had made it into the postseason last year. One thing about Jose Calderon, you could see the frustration in him last season playing a career low 42 games, and his averages were down pretty much, Greg, across the board. Yeah, and, and Kevin, he was brought in to kind of invigorate the Knicks' point guard position, but following a preseason calf injury, you know, he missed the team's first 13 games and, and never was able to really get going. Remember, coming into a new system where he had to learn how to play differently, and then after all that, you know, you have to shut him down because of that left Achilles. Campbell kicks to Bosch. Drains the 19 foot. Bosch has got seven points in the game. He presents a defender with a serious challenge. Always. To the inside. Back to Calderon. 40 seconds left in the third quarter. Aflalo dishes to Amundsen. Six to shoot. Seraphin kicks to Calderon. Some nice passing by New York here. Williams with the ball. Now guarded by Winslow. The Heat leading by four. There's 18 seconds left in the third quarter. No good from Campbell. And now in transition, it's a follow. Here we go. Good. The nice assist for William. Six points for Aaron Aflalo. And it doesn't really matter who starts the break with how he runs the floor. He seems to always be the one who finishes. Yeah, he is so fun to watch and how he attacks the rim at full speed like that, man. It's, uh, it's something to behold the way that guy gets to the rim. to what's been a hard-fought battle. Fourth quarter should be good. The Heat with the lead. All right now, a chance to set the floor courtesy of Gatorade. Fourth quarter action. All fueled up and ready to go. Move the ball. Setting the floor Stick for the Knicks. They've got Porzingis. Calderon is out there with a flow. Then there's Robin Lopez, and it's Anthony in at the small forward position. And it's good. Walk through contact, hits the shot, he'll go to the work. So the Knicks, Kyle O'Quinn, he's checked in for a flawless. And it's Amundsen in for Jose Coldero. He also with the sub. Campbell's checked in. Anthony against Dragic. Now oh, here's Freak, not a lot of room. Like at six. Again. The miss by the Heat. What a big possession right here. No doubt about it, guys. The tension is palpable. What are you doing? Shooting for the So the first one drops, and that brings them to one two. So for the Knicks, Swallow comes in for Kyle O'Quinn. And it's Calderon in for Lou Hodmanson. The Heat also with the sub. Lou All Dang is checked in for Dwayne Wade. And a tough break is his second attempt at the line. No good. Yeah, being down two points instead of one thanks to the free throw miss makes getting a stop here absolutely critical. It's stolen by Calderon. 
Three second difference between shot clock and game. Oh, and a jam by Anthony. This is what happens when you allow Carmelo Anthony to heat up. For the New York Knicks, they come in off the loss to the Magic in Orlando. Rogic kicks to Freak. Off target from downtown. And a fast break now for New York. And here's a follow for three. Marys the triple. They weren't very crisp in the first half, but they've really picked it up. The same shots they struggled with earlier are now starting to fall. Five seconds left here in the fourth quarter. Boy, he shows a lot of desire when he's fighting for that tough board. And his length doesn't hurt him. And he commits the intentional foul. You have to foul, but I'm sure they would have liked to foul someone different. Yeah, but Greg, they didn't really have a, another option. I mean, I thought they did a nice job getting it in his hands and making sure he was the guy who'd go to the line. So he goes two for two at the line. And it's a five-point game. You've got to figure those are the free throws that officially put this game out of reach. Rockets from outside misses the shot. So it's New York picking. up the win. Probably a little closer than they would have liked it, but caught a win nonetheless. Yeah, and it appeared to me as though the fans gave them the emotional boost they needed down the stretch, Kevin. This crowd was not... What is that in the KRL? I mean, mean KFR, what's that? Jose, congratulations on the win here tonight. How important was winning this game following your last loss to try to reestablish some momentum? Well, I think we played better. I think we're getting confidence. I know it was a bad loss, but we know what we have to do to win games. Uh, we got to be really concentrate. Uh, that's what we do. The 2K Sports Post Game Show. Welcome back, everybody. Ernie Johnson here along with Shaq and the Jet as we present our Jordan player of the game, Carmelo Anthony. The fourth quarter was all him. It was like he couldn't miss, and it was just one basket after another. We've seen so many performances like that over the course of Carmelo Anthony's career that we've gotten spoiled. But we shouldn't fail to appreciate what he has been able to do tonight. He was spectacular. When he doesn't try to do too much, Carmelo Anthony is absolutely lethal. And he had it going. And that wraps things up, folks. Thanks for joining us. For Shaquille O'Neal, Kenny the Jet Smith, Kevin Harlan, and the rest of the 2K Sports crew, I'm Ernie Johnson. Good night, everybody.